Last month it was reported that WWE management had suddenly decided to crack down on their wrestlers, who they classify as independent contractors, from doing one of the main things independent contractors should be able to do, making money elsewhere. It appeared Vince McMahon had finally realised Twitch isn't just a sudden uncontrollable bodily movement he can fire people for, it's also a platform where many of his roster stream themselves playing video games or, in the case of AJ Styles, talk about how he really he doesn't like Paul Heyman. WWE saw this as a case of independent contractors exploiting WWE intellectual property, as names like Paige or Lana are actually characters owned by the company, not by the wrestlers themselves, which is actually a totally reasonable position. It gets a bit murky though, when WWE claims they own the independent contractors' real names too. Following McMahon telling talent last month they can no longer engage with third-party services like Cameo or Twitch without going through WWE first, Wrestling Inc. is now reporting a new ultimatum has been made. Vince has emailed talent reminding them they have until this Friday, today, to sever any unauthorised business relationships with third parties. It was noted that talent who failed to comply could be fined suspended or terminated. The report adds that talent were told WWE would be taking control of their Twitch accounts in four weeks. WWE will then own those accounts, but talent will receive a percentage of the revenue which counts against their downside guarantees. The downside guarantees being money they would have been paid by WWE anyway. Dave Meltzer has corroborated this, adding there is still some confusion whether WWE owns the rights to those real names. Many are hastily changing their social accounts from their character names to real names just in case. NXT's Roderick Strong appears to have been the first to fall, tweeting, It was fun while it lasted, but tomorrow morning my cameo account will be gone. So get yours while you still can. With the deadline being today, expect plenty more messages like this from WWE talent, especially with pretty much the entire roster getting cameo accounts as an extra source of income during lockdown, including top stars like Rey Mysterio. Mysterio, Matt Riddle, Charlotte Flair, Roman Reigns, and Tom! Just Tom! Just make sure to tell him to squat slightly so he's not taller than you in the video. WWE using their wrestlers as independent contractors instead of employees is one of the longest running controversies in the wrestling industry, as when you take into account all the restrictions placed on them and how WWE have total control over everything they do, they're really Really not. The McMahon family have resisted any challenge to this for decades, with it being speculated that's why Linda McMahon is so politically active and one of the biggest donors to the Trump campaign. But there is an election looming, and Joe Biden has apparently promised to discuss the ridiculous classification of WWE wrestlers as independent contractors while controlling their names and likeness for years, even for something as benign as Cameo. And former presidential candidate and Democrat Andrew Yang has tweeted following this new report, This would be infuriating to me if I had spent time building up my social media channels only to have WWE take them over from their independent contractors. People are angry, and rightfully so. When WWE first told talent they owned their real names and would be taking control of their third-party outlets like Twitch and Cameo, it was reported several were not going to comply and force a complete renegotiation of their contracts. What do you think is going to happen next between the wrestlers and management? Let me know in the comments. And WWE might be giving their wrestlers yet another reason to quit. Thanks for your support on Patreon, the crafty man fake carpenter. According to Inside the Ropes Gary Cassidy, WWE are already planning to leave their Thunderdome setup in the Amway Center to broadcast Raw and SmackDown around the country. With their venue deal expiring on the 31st of October, WWE has apparently told talent there are tentative plans in place to travel again. Triple H himself hinted as much on the TakeOver media call saying, traveling to different cities won't be possible for a long time, but moving to one set location could be possible. And 
surprisingly, this has upset the wrestlers expected to travel during a pandemic. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful Select is reporting that unanimously, backstage, the reception was that of groans and frustration, with many thinking that the decision to do this after the company knew of another outbreak was a poor one. These plans come just two weeks after the third outbreak of COVID-19 in the promotion. Apparently, one top wrestler said there is little confidence from the roster in WWE to be able to keep them safe on the road. And one of those new set locations has already been revealed, even if it's kind of going back to one they were using already. Post Wrestling is reporting NXT will be moving to the Performance Center for the foreseeable future beginning this Sunday with TakeOver 31. NXT, like every other WWE show, was broadcast from the Performance Center at the start of lockdown, but they moved back to their old Full Sail University home once it was open again. And now they're going back to the PC. 205 will also be moving moving with it because apparently 205 Live is still being made. This is potentially what Triple H teased in Wednesday's media call, something totally different that hasn't been done. Like NXT Underground. Because according to Fightful, WWE was pitching a brand new show before the pandemic called NXT Underground sound familiar. This would have featured talent from Evolve and NXT stars who don't make it onto the weekly USA Network show. WWE even filmed a pilot last summer, and it's been a long-term project for Performance Center creative producer Ryan Katz, which Shane McMahon appears to have danced over and taken. But they don't even need it, because NXT was up over 30,000 viewers for this week's TakeOver Go Home show for 732,000, while AEW Dynamite pulled in 866 Six. That means almost 1.6 million people watched quality wrestling on Wednesday night, despite very stiff competition from the NBA, baseball, and South Park. Of course, this would be dramatically increased if they didn't run directly head-to-head, -head, which Triple H has decided not to do, saying, I'm happy with where we are. And where they are is specifically counter-programmed to take chunks out of AEW's viewership, not actually increase NXT's audience. So happy with that. Now here's everything else happening in wrestling news. WWE wanted Rusev to do an erectile dysfunction storyline. Rusev, limp. Speaking on the AEW Unrestricted podcast, the now-called Miro said, they really wanted to kill me completely. I don't think in anybody's eyes how the babyface has erectile dysfunction that he's a good guy. And that is why Mr. Davis is the best babyface around. <laughs> come back. Thankfully, Miro persuaded them to do the complete opposite and make his character a sex addict instead. Speaking of things taking frustratingly long to return, come on, Mr. Davis, you you're a big, strong boy, Mr. Davis. Edge has told Busted Open Radio that his tricep tear healing is not as fast as I would have liked. Original WWE plans had Edge returning in a few months for the Royal Rumble, to then have a third match with Randy Orton at WrestleMania 37. And Dave Meltzer has revealed another reason why New Japan President Harold Meij would be stepping down later this month. He had initially promised $200 million in revenue for the company, which he ended up being far away from even without the financial effects of the pandemic. Meiji's real mistake was consistently playing New Japan's extension into the US too safely, never booking a big enough venue despite them being at the height of their popularity. This frustrated the top US stars like Kenny Omega, which is one of the reasons so many left to form AEW. A promotion that was also helped created by Kevin Owens. In our exclusive interview with DDP, he reveals Cody was brought into the elite thanks to some KO matchmaking. From what I understand, it was because of Kevin, Kevin Owens. He had called up the Bucks, who he was good friends with, and said, Cody's a solid cat. You know, you guys might want to pull him into your group. Of course, we know what happened there. That year, Cody made like seven figures. Here's a clip of DDP talking about his first AEW match back from earlier this year. Well, when Cody asked me again, I realized it's 2020. That would make, I wrestled in six decades. I'm going to do it. <laughs> and when he told me that I had the whole comeback and then I was going to come over the, off the top rope, 
I didn't sell it, but my body was like, oh. <laughs> Click the video on the right now to watch our full exclusive DDP interview and also check out his fantastic DDPY program using the link in the video description below. And there's some major babyface turns being planned in WWE. Click the video on the right to find out who. I've been Mr. Davis. Jam that jam.